Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where I'm going to take a look in a moment at this um, puzzle that's been requested on our Twitter account, which is at Cryptic Cracking, uh, for those of you who want to follow us on there. Um, you can also, if you have videos that you'd like us to have a go at, or Sudokus you'd like us to have a go at, or crosswords actually, um, email them to us at crackingthecryptic at gmail.com. So, without further ado, let's look at this. Now, I'm not sure how hard this puzzle is going to be. As I say, it, it looks to me from the screenshot that was sent to me that it's from a Sudoku app on a phone. Um, but the request doesn't say how hard this puzzle was rated. So we're going to have to sort of play it a bit by ear. As usual, you can see at the beginning, what I'm doing here is I'm adding little pencil marks in each 3x3 three three block where... I can identify that a number can only go in exactly two positions. Now, at some stage, this will not be enough, I suspect, if this puzzle is of any difficulty. Just to briefly talk you through it, this, this sort of pencil mark will get you through uh, a fiendish puzzle in the Times, possibly a super fiendish puzzle in the Times. Um, it will get you most of the way through a diabolical puzzle in the Daily Telegraph. It'll get you all of the way through a New York Times hard Sudoku puzzle. Um, and it'll get you through most of the puzzles you'd see in tournaments, um, actually, because they don't tend to be extremely esoteric in terms of the logic that's required. And the end game of most tournament puzzles is not brutally difficult, um, and that's that's because they don't want to encourage guessing. Because once the logic gets very, very hard and dense, actually guessing is the quickest way of solving it. And they, they, most uh, Sudoku competitions don't want the best guesser to win. They want the best logician to win. So they tend to actually develop the puzzles at a slightly easier level than you might expect. Um, now, here we go. I've got a number at last. So this four here forces a four into the top row of the grid. And now we have a 4 here and a 4 here. So this is going to have to be a 4. Um, can pencil mark some 4s in there as well because of this 4 and how it interacts on this 3x3 three three block. And that means this square up here must be a 4 too. And let's put that in. You can see that's immediately very powerful down this right hand side because now we need to, we're left with the numbers 1, 3, and 6 to place. Now the earlier pencil mark we placed was this 3. Um, so we now know, as, as there has to be a 3 in this, in one of these three squares, it can only be here. This, if we put the 3 here, we could no longer complete column 9. So let's put the 3 in. The remaining numbers are 1 and 6, so you can see that we have a 1 here. So that's going to be a 1, that's going to be a 6. Uh, there. Well, I suppose we can pencil mark 6s into those two squares because of the 6 here and this 6 we've just found. So that allows us to make more pencil marks down at the bottom there. And sevens now we can pencil mark because we've completed this threesome here. We now can lock the sevens into two positions. Um, and now, what next, you may say? Um, well, uh, what I'm looking at now, just so that you're all on the same page that I am, is I'm comparing rows and columns. So you can see that in lots of columns here we have four given numbers, um, but in some places we get some quite interesting differences. So if we look at row 8 for example, we've already got the numbers 1, 2, and th one, two 3 and 6 placed, but we get a 3, 8, 7 and 4 by looking down column 6 at the same time. So this square can actually only be two things. It can only be a think of 5 and a 9. I'm tempted to start penciling that sort of thing in actually um, because I'm not seeing anything much better as a result of pencil marks. So I suspect, and I suspect this is a very, you know, it's going to be an extreme puzzle or something. If people are sending us puzzles, they tend to be very, very difficult. So often we have to abandon this so-called Snyder notation quite early. So let's just carry on up this column. Uh, this square, that's very restricted. Um, so 2, 3, yes, in fact this square can only be a 2. If we go through the options, we've got 
it can be a 2, it can't be a 3, it can't be a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. So this can only be a 2. So that might, oh, that is useful. Now, go over here to this square. Now we've eliminated the possibility of there being a 2 where we pencil marked the 2 earlier. So we know that the other pencil mark now must be true. Um, that's nice because actually this is help, helpful. So now we get a 2, 7 pair up here in this 3x3 three three block and we can resolve that immediately because of this 2. So that's got to be the 2, therefore this is the 7. We can now pencil mark 7s into those two squares and pencil mark 2, oops, 2s into those two squares I think. Um, yeah, that looks that looks okay, doesn't it? Um, so let's just check this. Once we get a line of this six here, now is forcing a six, a six into one of these three squares. I can't pencil mark it because that's three squares, not two squares. But I know there's a six in one of these three squares. That's going to interact with this six and force six into one of those two squares. But from the earlier pencil marks, again, this can't be true. So this must be the six down here. What are we left with in this column now? So 1, 5, 8. So this is a 1 or an 8. I am going to pencil mark that. This is a 1 or a 5. And this is a 5 or an 8. So we've got three squares there in column 3 that are all doubles. And it's doubles really that I'm very interested in now. Once I, once I think that the standard pencil mark technique isn't going to take me too far, I, I'm on the lookout for doubles to to help me find the next um, deduction. So now let's let's take a look at column six. So we've got three, five, six, and nine to place. Well, that can be anything. That's no. Uh, maybe this isn't. Ah, no. Here we go. So there's a. So this is a five or a six. Um. And this is a five or a nine. Okay. So the threes are locked up here, which we could have actually seen earlier from these threes in these two positions. Oh, and in fact, sevens are operating on this three by three block as well, aren't they? I should have seen that earlier. We have a seven here and a seven here, so we can pencil mark sevens into those two squares, which resolves the seven up here. Look, this can no longer be a seven. This is one of the hazards of live solving using a computer, is that I quite often miss what is staring me in the face and I apologize for that but I think it's better if I solve these live because it gives you a more real experience of you know what I'm actually thinking about um, so now this square must be a 5 or a 6 uh, ah okay right now this is an important tri trick we can do now um, this sort of trick comes up all the time in Sudoku and it can radically improve your solving if you get good at spotting this. So the, the key really is to see that, I mean, this 5-6 pair is, is really stands out to me, especially in conjunction with this possibility that this square is a 5. Now, if we just study column 3 here, there's... Uh, there's a way we can word the logic to make it very clear to ourselves. So this can be a 5, this square. But if it isn't, this is not a 5. This square must be the 5 because there's no other positions a 5 can go in column 3. But the moment this is a 5, look what happens immediately. This has to be a 6. This has to be a 5. So you can, you can very quickly see either this is a 5 or this is a 5. That is absolutely forced. Uh, it doesn't require some great long chain of logic. It simply requires you to notice there are two fives in column three, and the fact that there's, you know, there's implications for this one being a five immediately. So we know there's a five here or a five here. So where can there not be a five? Well, certainly there can't be a five in this square, because uh, that's going to cause a contradiction. So we can remove the five from here, and now that has to be a nine immediately resolves the pencil marks in this 3x3 three three block at the bottom. Look, that's going to have to be a 9 now. Um, 9, 9, we can pencil mark 9's there. 9, 9, ah, so now this square has to be a 9 because of the 9 over here. So in the moment, again, I write this 9 in, I can 
write the two in as well because that resolves those pencil marks from earlier. Now, pencil mark the twos down here. Uh, and uh, there's another pencil mark I wanted to put in as a result of what I was just looking at, but I got distracted, <laughs> which is um, never a good idea. Why well, was the other pencil mark I wanted to put in? I think it was. Was it with nine? Yes, nine, nine. So these two have to be a nine up there. Um, ah, now we have an eight here and an eight here. So this has to be an eight. So this, now we have an eight here and an eight here. So we can get an eight, nine pair up at the top there. Look, that's that might be useful. Um, three, five, and six to complete the row. So now we can pencil mark threes into those two positions. I don't think that's going to help us very much, unfortunately. And I'm going to label this as a five, six pair. Now, if we look down column four, five, six here, and this must also be a five or a six. Um, okay. Now, just uh, again to be transparent about what I'm noticing, you know, I'm noticing that there's there's all sorts of chaining going on here, you know, if, if if this is a 7 for example, you know, that's forcing a 1 here, this is an 8, therefore this is a 5. Um, these are the sorts of things that we need to keep an eye on as we go through the solve because there could be a simple deduction we can make off the back of this um, at some stage. Now, where could we go now? Let's check. Let's check. Call a row four, sorry, um, one, three, seven, and eight. No, well, that's one, three, or seven there. Three here. Okay, that's no use. Um, let's check. Let's check row three. You can see we've got six numbers there. So three, five, and six. Our humbug. Can be anything. Three five here. That's better. Three five or six. That's, I just struggle to believe this is going to be important over here. Um, one three five six here. Again. Thing doing, I don't think I'm not seeing it. If there is, no doubt you shout at me in the in the comments if I'm missing something. So let's check. Let's check uh, row eight now. So four, five, seven, and eight. Mm, four, five, eight there. Ah, doesn't look good. Ah, uh, oh, that's better. Look at this square. Four and eight here. So this that can be a five or a seven. There you go. Well, that that is helpful, maybe. Yes, it is. It's definitely helpful. I can see why. Um, so immediately that I saw that this was a double. You, I think I said earlier that I can see there's some sort of chaining going on around here. Well, now this square is important. So let's ask ourselves the key questions again. If this is a seven, that's one thing. But if this is a five, watch what happens. Five, eight, one. And this is a seven. Again, not too difficult to see that. You know, we were on the lookout for it earlier. So we've either got a seven here or a seven here. So this square, in particular, cannot contain a seven. Now, ordinarily, you might say, "Oh, it's only getting us down to a pair." But whenever you get this sort of uh, trick, just check whether the elimination of the of the number that you've got rid of matters in terms of the row, the column, and the box. Now you can see. In the column here, there's, there's still two positions we could place a 7 left. But in the row, where can we put a 7 now? This 7 here rules out a 7 in either of these two squares. So in fact, only this can be the 7. And that immediately also gives us a 1 there as well. So I'm hoping... Uh, we won't now. <laughs> I'm hoping that this, this is going to be important in terms of completing the puzzle. Um, now, let's see what we can do. 
So we've got four, five, six, and seven to place. So this square here is now a six or a seven. Um, I'm just checking, I'm just checking the chaining, sorry. Um, and this is a four or a five over here. Hmm. Check this square. So what can this be? One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is ruled out. So yeah, there is there is a chain, isn't there? I think. So we can just do that. We just do what we've just done, to be honest. Um, so we started the chain here to force a problem. Um, let's just start it here instead. So either this is a six, um, in which case you can see it's impacting immediately on this square and removing the six, or it's a seven. But watch again, if it's a seven, five, eight, one, five, six. So we've got this, this interaction of these sixes now. So it's all working off this same pattern that's going round you know, around the houses here, around these doubles. And that's why doubles are so important in terms of solving these puzzles. Now, so let's get rid of the six here. Now we have a one, three pair all of a sudden in this. Now that, now that is helpful because now this three up here is resolved. We can no longer have a three in this square. And we're left with this being a five or a six. Um, Again, I'm tempted to chain it, but let's 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 just carry on uh, doing what we're doing um, a bit longer. So four, five, six, seven here. That's still four, six, or seven there. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, hang on. There's a there's a four and a four here, and there can't be a four there. So there's, oh, please don't let that matter. Um, so I missed a simple four here, and now I'm just looking at this now. I don't think it's terribly important to, in terms of the logic we've just been discussing. That would be so irritating. Um, so we know that there's a four in one of these two positions. Yeah. I'm just going to check this square. One, I think this can be anything, almost one, three, can be a four, can even be a five by the looks of it. Can't be a six, seven, eight, or nine. So there's still a lot of possibilities for that square. That, uh, in, in a way, that reassures me that this four wasn't important. Um, Okay, so I need to spot something else. What could that be? Um, my mind, to be honest, my mind keeps coming back to these uh, these sixes um, and fives because they they seem to all interdepend on one another, going around the grid here. And I'm sure if we follow the chain of them, we would be able to prove something. Um, let me just think. Yeah. Just wondering, because you can see, if we, if we study the bottom of the grid here, we have a six here and a six here. So we know the six is in one of these two positions. We just don't know which. So one possibility, obviously, is that this is a six. But if this isn't a six, we know for sure this is. And that gets us into a chain. So if, if this is a six, we get the five here. We get a six here. We get a seven here. A five here. And a six here. So that is one way we could solve the puzzle at this stage we could notice that either this is a six or this is a six and that impacts obviously on this square both this square and this square see this square so it's absolutely impossible for this to be a six because we know that either this one's a six or this one's a six ruling out that possibility 
I get a 5. Now I can remove this 5 and I get 3, 6, which still that look, does look like it's going to work. So that's a 5, that's a 6. That means this is a 6 down here, this is a 6 over here. Um, and hopefully now we're getting somewhere. This has to be a 7 now. This 5 here. Four, six. Move this four. We've now got a one, three, five triple. You can see this has to be a four. Um, this must be a five. This is an eight. This is a one. This is a five. I'm hoping it does feel like this is it, doesn't it? it feels like we've we've cracked it. I think one five. So this is three and eight. This is three and oops, it's not six and one, it's three and one. I know that. Three and one. Um move this five here. So we've got one, three, and six along here. So that's one, three, and six, three, five, or six here, so that's five or six. Okay, that all seems to still work annoyingly. Uh this cannot be a 6 anymore, so we're left with 2 and 5, I think. And so those two squares. And down here we need 2, 7 and 8. Oh, so that has to be a 2. Maybe we could have got that earlier. Oops. 7, 8, 5, 2, 5, 3, one, six, five, one, nine, nine, eight, three, six, and there we go. So I hope that was an interesting solve today. Lots of chains, but um, some quite nice ones actually, and definitely a good puzzle for us. So thanks very much. I think it was Bill who uh, asked us to solve this on Twitter today. So thanks for that, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.